New at 10, a final voyage for the Enterprise as the nation looks on. We continue our coverage of last night's science experiment gone wrong at a local school and new information in the defamation case against Jim Beheim. Our Jeff Kulikowski takes us to the courtroom. From WSYR 9.2 Syracuse, this is News Channel 9 at 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rod Wood. Christy has the night off. We have continuing coverage tonight on that defamation lawsuit against Jim Beheim and Syracuse University. We learned today that a judge plans to make a call on a possible dismissal of the case in a couple of weeks. Lawyers for Beheim and SU and State Supreme Court this afternoon tried to get the judge to drop the case. But Bobby Davis and Mike Lang's attorneys, who are suing the coach and school for defamation, asked the judge to allow it to go forward. News Channel 9's Jeff Kulikowski was at the hearing and heard the heated debate firsthand. It's very clear that, rightly or wrongly, Coach Beheim was defending himself and his decades-long colleague. He was speaking from a place of loyalty, and he was being opinionated about it. The point here is that Mr. Beheim is manipulating and grossly misrepresenting the facts, and that is actually also in the cases which I'll, I'll get to in a minute, exactly a basis for a defamation claim. Each side argued for about half an hour each today, just a sprinkling of the voluminous case law they've presented to Judge Brian DeJoseph for him to read over. Both Bobby Davis and Mike Lang were in the courtroom today, along with well-known attorney Gloria Allred. This is an extremely important case, and, and that's why we've come thousands of miles, uh, because we think our, our clients are our heroes, and they deserve so much more than they have been able to get. It was important to be here just to show support to our lawyers that are trying to help us out to do the right thing, to, you know, to proceed with our lawsuit. Now, Bayheim and SU are asking the judge to dismiss the case before it makes it to trial. You can't trust nobody. You can't trust anybody. And they'll, they'll break right in your house. They don't care. In Oswego County tonight, two men in Fulton are behind bars. Peter Malazuski of Canastota and Joseph Fetkew of Fulton are paying the price for a number of local crimes between them, including burglary, robbery, grand larceny, criminal mischief, and assault. Malazuski was arraigned on April 17th and taken to Oswego County Public Safety Center. Fetkew was arrested Wednesday and put in jail on $20,000 bail. Also in Fulton today, a man arrested for sex crimes. Paul Ferenzi of Fulton allegedly gave a 12-year-old girl a pipe to smoke pot, then sexually assaulted her. Ferenzi is being charged with first-degree rape, sex abuse, criminal sale of marijuana, and endangering the welfare of a child. He's being held tonight on $50,000 cash bail or $100,000 bond. Continuing coverage tonight of a science experiment gone terribly wrong. Fire investigators are still working to learn more tonight about what took place yesterday at Sewell Road Middle School. An explosion in class sent three students and their teacher to the hospital. One student remains hospitalized tonight, but we're told she is doing well and is in good condition. News Channel 9's Stacy Lynn Honda went to Clay today for this update. moments as three students and a science Now the superintendent declined to tell us any specifics about what the teacher was doing right before the explosion for insurance reasons and the ongoing nature of the investigation. Well Central New York is in for a deep freeze tonight. News Channel 9's Dave Longley tells us what we're in for. Dave, how cold it is going to get? Well, many of us, Rod, will be down into the mid-20s, near record low territory, and as a result, a freeze warning is in effect. By tomorrow morning, we'll look for low temperatures right around 25 in Syracuse, 22 Fabius and Casanova, 27 Fulton, 30 in Oswego, mid-20s over the Tug Hill Plateau. Over the Finger Lakes, we'll be in the mid-20s, 24 Ithaca, 22 Norwich, 24 in Rome. And again, for most of us, it'll be a cold start to the day tomorrow, but apple growers south of Syracuse, also many areas, uh, folks with agricultural interests keeping a close eye on the thermometer uh, as temperatures do get down into the mid-20s. It's going to be cold at night through the weekend, but there are signs of a warm-up, and I'll have more on that for you in a few minutes. Rod. 
Dave, thanks. A consumer alert tonight about your electric bill. It may be on its way down. National Grid says that if New York's Public Service Commission approves a proposal released today, residential customers will see about a 2% drop in their bill next year. National Grid says through the proposal, its delivery rates would stay the same into 2014. And natural gas customers would see the price drop as well. In more consumer news tonight, the state attorney general wants answers from Verizon now. State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman wants action against Verizon in New York over increasing complaints about poor repair service of phone customers with landlines. Schneiderman says Verizon is neglecting customers with landlines and focusing too much on the more lucrative wireless users. The Attorney General told the Public Service Commission that the percentage of customers without service for more than 24 hours has increased and the commission has allowed Verizon to provide poor service to 92% of its customers. The bill is passed. The president's been all over the country lately talking about college loans, and today Congress passed a bill to keep interest rates from doubling this summer. The president likes that, but what the parties don't agree on is where the money should come from. And to pick this big political fight where there is no fight is just silly. Give me a break. Well, the White House and most Democrats are against the almost $6 billion bill because of how Republicans are choosing to cover the costs, like eliminating a preventive health care fund in the president's health care law. The White House has threatened to veto the bill. Syracuse's most famous chief is heading up and out of town now. Bryce Harper, the Chiefs' top prospect, is on his way to the major leagues to join the Washington Nationals. The team is putting third baseman Ryan Zimmerman on the disabled list, which clears the way for Harper to join the big show in our nation's capital. Harper was the number one overall pick in the 2010 amateur draft. To the scientists, the engineers who make these wonderful things happen, I say to all of them and to Enterprise, live long and prosper. And the Enterprise has taken its final flight over America's landmarks. The space shuttle piggybacking on a 747 today made the trip to its New York City, its final home. New York Senator Chuck Schumer was there to share his thoughts on the shuttle's final flight and last landing. To see from afar the Enterprise fly by Freedom Tower is a symbol that New York and America always come back. In a few weeks, the shuttle will float down the Hudson River to reach its new home at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Well, if you're home for the night, grab an extra blanket, and if you're headed out in the town, you may want to put on your winter jacket. Temperatures are dipping yet again to freezing levels, but what's in store for the weekend? Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Dave Longley joins us for a, a look at Central New York's most accurate forecast. Yeah, Rod, uh, we are keeping an eye on the temperature. 40 right now in Syracuse, 39 Salve. Out near Manoa, it's 40 right now. Again, uh, 36, not bad in the apple orchards just yet. We'll show you why temperatures have been slow to drop. We're in the mid-30s near Ithaca, 35 in Seneca Thursday, Falls along the lake some rain shore will come in with that warmer air. Rob. All right, thank you, Dave. Well, that's our report for tonight. We thank you for joining us. Remember, for news and weather updates around the clock, just head to 9WSYR.com. Have a great night and a good weekend. From WSYR 9.2 Syracuse, this is News Channel 9 at 10. And good evening. Coming up on News Channel 9 at 10, yesterday's suspected robber is now in custody. How would you react if a car smashed into your house in the middle of the night? And a glimpse of rebuilding after the tragic flooding in the southern tier seven months ago. Good evening, I'm Christy Casciano. It's been more than seven months since massive floods ravaged the southern tier. Homes were destroyed, thousands of people were evacuated, and nearly 100 animals left inside this Johnson City Petco store. They died, sparking outrage from animal rights activists and animal lovers across the country. On Monday, the store reopens. News Channel 9 Stacy Lynn Honda got a chance to tour the new location in Johnson City this afternoon. 
It was a scene that sparked outrage. 100 animals, including guinea pigs. And as Stacy Lynn bird. tells us, the store will have a soft opening tomorrow, along with their new adoption center. A Rochester mother is in custody tonight on arson and manslaughter charges. The victims were her children. The mother, Bobby Kugler, was arrested in the Poughkeepsie area today. She's accused of setting a house on fire in Rochester that killed four of her children. The oldest was 14. Firefighters were able to rescue Kugler from the burning house along with her two-year-old daughter. Three others also escaped in time. The mother will be arraigned tomorrow morning. Imagine waking up to the sound of a crash in the middle of the night and walking outside to your front porch in ruins. It's exactly what happened to some Syracuse University students early this morning. There's the scene. Along with the porch, the driver managed to take out a nearby stop sign before taking off. Students were stunned. It's just about 3.30 and it's just an extremely loud noise. You know, it sounded like somebody had maybe fallen down the flight of stairs or I thought maybe too, is this part of my dreaming this? Like what's going on? And so uh, my roommate Gareth came knocking on the door and said, hey, somebody crashed into the front porch. Police are still on the lookout for the driver. Watch for updates on this story at 9wswire.com. Two men are facing charges in eight business break-ins. They're behind bars tonight. They're charged with attempted burglary at World Gold Fashion on Getta Street and burglary at Old Man's Garage on Bailey Drive. But that's not the whole story. The men are also suspects in six other business burglaries in the area. Now we've had interactions with both of these guys. Uh, they're actually both known gang members in the city of Syracuse. And, uh, We've had a lot of interaction, so that's one of the things that helped lead to their capture. There were some detectives that recognized these guys. Uh, you know, we, we just weren't sure, and then once we got the names from the public, it really helped us. We were able to go out and capture them. Charges are pending in the six other burglaries. The men are being held in the Justice Center jail, and police are still on the lookout for a third man. He robbed a Fulton Savings Bank yesterday, according to police, and tonight he's in jail. As News Channel 9's Keith Koblen Here's the story of a man doomed by surveillance video in less than a day. Less than 24 hours after the robbery of a Brewerton bank, the main... In Clay, Keith Koblen, News yeah. Channel 9. One of Bernie Fine's accusers has confessed he made it all up. Zach Tomaselli now says he fabricated his story about the former assistant yeah, SU basketball coach. The announcement comes on the heels of his sentencing earlier this week. He will be spending three years and three months in prison for sexually abusing a boy in Maine. Tomaselli is one of three men who came forward accusing Fine of sexual abuse. Fine was never charged. He denies any wrongdoing. A powerful storm system is expected to tear through from Texas to Minnesota this weekend. One tornado has already touched down. The twister hit near the University of Oklahoma this afternoon at the Norman campus. So far, no injuries reported, but several buildings are damaged tonight in the town, which lies about 20 miles south of Oklahoma City. The weekend's storm outbreak is being called potentially life threatening. The Great New York State Fair, a little more than four months away. We've just learned some of the acts that are coming to Chevy Court. You might know Neon Trees, best from the popular Buick car commercial. They're also known for hits like Animal and Everybody Talks. They'll play on opening day of the fair, set for Thursday, August 23rd. Also taking the stage this year, the Buddy Rich Big Band, a jazz and swing group performing since 1966. That concert will be on the first of the fair's two senior days, Monday, August 27th at 2 p.m. And finally, the group best known for hits like Brick House and Three Times a Lady, the Commodores will perform Friday, August 31st at 8 p.m. News Channel 9 will keep you posted on all the performers coming to the fair. Just keep checking with 9WSYR.com. Honestly, the, I felt like I was delivered from the fires of hell. I, I mean, and that's why I'm saying people are saying, oh, you're so courageous. The reality is uh, I didn't feel any courage. I felt fear. That's Cory Booker, the mayor of Newark, and a man some are calling a real hero today. The mayor had just arrived home Thursday night when he saw his next door neighbor's house on fire. His security detail arriving before him had already gone in and rescued three people. Booker burst in the house despite some resistance from a detective on the scene, and he came out with a woman who is trapped in the fire. The mayor is also nursing a few minor injuries today. The woman's still in the hospital. 
Many years and six kids later, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are finally making it official. Pitt's manager confirmed today that the couple has at long last gotten engaged. She also mentioned that the famous couple's six children, three adopted, three biological, are very happy. The couple hasn't yet set a wedding date. Shaping up to be a nice looking weekend. Let's find out more now from Chief Meteorologist Dave Longley with Central New York's most accurate forecast, Dave. Yeah, Christy, uh, quiet here. Again, uh, we are keeping an eye on what's going on out through Oklahoma right now. Some strong storms, and we'll have much more on what's been going on. on Five late coming next up week. tonight, Christy. Thank you, Dave. And that's our report for tonight. News and weather updates anytime at 9wsyr.com. Have a great weekend.